Oh my god, look at that crowd. The Swindon Town Swoodley Poopers are up against Sevilla. Um, enjoy this moment right now, friends, because it is tied. And it will not be tied at the end of the game, because we are going to lose. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to be honest with you. We are probably not going to win this game. Uh, I've I've come to ha I've come to be realistic. These these teams are a lot better than we are statistically, and at this skill level, that really matters. Wow, the pitch just looks beautiful tonight. But I mean, it's just a pleasure to be able to play on such a high quality field. Um, so let's you know let's take our our pleasures where we can get them. Um, so uh, to someone wanted me to talk about early Islamic history, which you know. That seems like an interesting topic for a Swindon Town Swoodley Poopers video. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, what? It's in the goal! It's in the goal! Right out of nothing! How is this possible? One of the best teams in Spain just got scored on at home by the Swindon Town Swoodley Poopers. It's other John Green, Nay Bennett. Look at the strength. Ball with professional skill level, he scores! Oh my... Ugh. I mean, he's big, he's buff, he has a majestic puff. Other John Green, other John Green. What a great goal. That puts us, now we just have to defend the lead. Okay, so um, in 622 uh, AD or CE, um, it, that's the first year of the Islamic calendar. So one of the things that we learn from history is that people date not from the beginning of time, but from the most significant events in their in their history. So in the, uh, in the Christian world, we date from the birth of Jesus, although it turns out we were wrong by four years. But, um, and then and in, the, in, in the Islamic world, they date from what's called the Hijra, which was the Muslim com Islamic community uh, journeyed from Mecca to Medina. Um, oh gosh. Yes! Oh, Ginger Rampage with a heroic tackle. Merrick, Merrick dispossessed. Um, that journey from, from Mecca to Medina in some ways marks the beginning. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad um, had, had <coughs> the Quran had, had been, <coughs> sorry, having to clear my throat. The Quran had, had, had been revealed, or parts of the Quran had been revealed to the Prophet Muhammad before that journey. But, you know, in some ways that really represents the beginning of the Muslim community as a political unit because they went to Medina and essentially in Medina they were able to um, form a, a cohesive political unit um, that was, you know, based where, with, where the prophet was both the um, religious and political leader of the community. Um, later, much later, uh, the, that Islamic community would be allowed to make annual pilgrimages to Mecca and then eventually um, the, the Meccans would become uh, Muslims as well, or the remaining Meccans. And, but that really be, that's really the beginning of, of the story of Islamic history, um, is this, ah. Oh, he missed somehow. I'm still winning. Oh, sorry, you just got burninated. Um, so in, uh, so the prophet, the prophet Muhammad uh, was a merchant, a trader, and uh, he became, and then the angel Gabriel came to him and said, recite. This was back in Mecca. And, uh, and then what he was told to recite was, was the Holy Quran. And it's a little bit different. Uh, th for those of you who aren't familiar with the Quran, it's a little bit different from scriptures like, like the Bible that you might be more familiar with. Because uh, the Bible tells, it, the Bible is much more narrative than the Quran is, for one thing. But the, the Bible also... Um, it tells a story that, that was written by by people. Um, now, like Christians believe it's the inspired word of God, but when you when you read it, it's written by people. Like the Apostle Mark or the Apostle John in the Gospel is the author of that Gospel. But the author of the Quran is not the Prophet Muhammad. The author of of the Quran is God. Um, so the Quran is written from God's perspective. It is God's word, and um, and that is a, is a really interesting and important distinction. I need you now, Fitzhall. I, oh, great save. You just got a second degree burner. We just have to keep the pressure on. Oh, that was not good. That was not good. We just have to find a way to not give up a goal because we are leading. This would be huge. This would be really huge for our club right now. Look at that. We've had one shot. They've had seven. But, it, but it's the quality of our one shot that matters, friend. Um... So, um, 
So that so so it, from the very beginning, um, you know, because it because the word of God was being revealed through um, through the Prophet Muhammad's recitations, the structure of the of the community was different. I mean, it, Muhammad's um, Muhammad wasn't speaking, although you know the things that Muhammad said and and did are are collected in in a, a kind of. Uh, a kind of scripture called the hadiths. Those are the sayings and actions of the prophet, um, and and those are considered um, sacred scripture by most Muslims, um, almost all, really. But the 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 Quran is the is the core of um, of of all Islamic thought and faith and practice, and it is not. It, there are narratives within it, but it's not. It's not primarily. Narrative, and it's also not primarily legalistic, although it does sometimes have that reputation. Um, it's it's a revelation, like all um, like all scriptures, and reads very much like a revelation. Um, and that uh, that that ended up shaping Islamic history a lot. So when the Prophet Muhammad uh, died, he left behind this power vacuum, essentially. Like obviously, there would there was no religious leader who was going to replace him. Um, but there needed to be a political leader who would replace him. And that was very different from the story that you see in Christianity because Jesus was never a political leader and famously said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar and render unto God what is God's, um, you know, and, and didn't even seem to really have political ambitions. Now, people disagree over why that was. Maybe it's because he thought the world was going to end. Maybe it's because, um, you know, he, he just didn't see that as being important. But what, what's happening? Stan, panic. Okay, everything's fine. Oh, I thought that I was going to lose my precious gold of Sevilla there for a second. Um, so, that's not a, that was not a foul. Merrick, Merrick doesn't foul people like that. He was just sort of hugging with his hip. Um, so, uh, so that political, that, that political vacuum and the way that it got filled ended up shaping the rest of Islamic history and also shapes contemporary history in really interesting ways because the leader who was, um, who was eventually chosen by the majority of the Muslim community was Abu Bakr. Um, and he became the first caliph of, um, of, of the Islamic political entity. Um, and the, the first four caliphs, caliphs um, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali, are seen as the sort of, that's seen as the really, the, the age of righteousness in um in Islamic history, like that's seen as the golden age. That's the time when the right people were leading, and they were leading in the right way, and uh, things were pretty good. There was a lot of growth. Um, there's, there's this reputation that Islam spread by the sword, which is really untrue. Um, but there was that is not a foul. They do not give me a card for just loving him, for going down low and expressing love for him on in the shin area. That's not a card. That's I don't know how else to say I love you. We're in the 81st minute, ladies and gentlemen, and we are still up 1-0. So, um, but there was a large community of people who felt that Ali, not, oh, I need you. Yes, great job. That was a third degree burner. Oh, thank you, Bunsen Berna. Um, there, was, there, were, there were many people in the uh, early Islamic community who felt that the, um, who felt that the first caliph should not have been Abu Bakr, but should have been Ali. Um, these people who are loyal uh, to Ali uh, are now known as uh, Shias, um, and their uh, their history is very different from the Sunni Muslim history in terms of uh, the way that they see both the way that the world should have been and the way that it was. Um, and and so those and those belief systems, those differing belief systems, developed very. That was not great. A great job, Berninator. Those varying belief systems developed quite early. Um, and, um, and, and still have a huge, sorry, it's a little hard to focus, still have a huge impact. I probably, I, I, oh no! Oh, we were only in, we're only in the 69th minute. I'm sorry, I thought we were in the, I thought we were in the 89th minute. Um, I really have no cause to complain, because if anything, I'm going to give up three more goals. So, there's that. Ah. Uh, so, um, 
So you see very different. So you still see very different practices between uh, Sunni Muslims and Shia Muslims. Although I think like the um, a lot of the the talk in the Western world about this division, this sectarian violence, sectarian divisions, um, that's not really very legitimate. Um, like it's it's really not that simple. Um, but that that is why that is why, for instance, in Iran, which is a primarily Shia country, um, you see a, or well, that's one of the reasons anyway, why in in a, you see a bit of a well, not a bit of a rift, a pretty huge rift between um, Iran and the Arab world. Um, I mean, also, people in Iran don't speak Arabic uh, as their first language usually. Um, but you know, so so when we um, kind of conflate Iran and Iraq. Uh, we're doing history a great disservice because pretty much from the very beginning of Islamic history, those have been um, different different communities. But during that initial period of um, what's called the four rightly guided caliphs, the um, there was a lot of growth in the community of of Muslims, and some of that growth did come from uh, did spread by empire. Um, now it's also, by the way not fair to say that Christianity spread without the help of empire um, because Christianity didn't really take off until it had the help of Constantine um, who was super into empire and uh, many many people thereafter who um, who shared uh, Constantine's belief that um, Christianity should be shared uh, at all costs including the sword um, and that's true for every religious tradition it's also true for you know traditionally um, uh, as we'll talk about in cra an episode of Crash Course, actually, please don't give me a card for that. Okay, I accept your card. It was a little bit of a foul. Um, I, I'm I'm trying to preserve my point here. Wow, that was really late, Merrick. You gotta stay lower with that foot there, buddy. Um, um, so I mean, every in in an episode of Crash Course, we talk about how Buddhism spread by the sword too. Um, so I don't think that's a fair. I mean, I'm not trying to be an apologist for. Um, uh, for Islam or any other religious tradition, but I don't think it's I don't think it's fair at all um, to say that you know one religion is inherently violent or spreads inherently uh, by the sword. That's really the reputation that you get in Western textbooks about early um, early Islamic history. But it's a it's it's not true, particularly if you look at places like Central Asia. And b even if it were true, it would also be true of lots of other religious traditions. So a heroic tie away, all the way in Spain. They had to travel from Swindon to Spain. We tied, we scored a goal in the fifth minute. We gave one up in the 69th, but uh, a 1-1 one -one tie for the Swindon Town Swoodley Poopers, which is a great result against Sevilla. We are going to have to win at least one game here if we realistically want to move on in the Euro League, but I mean, who are we kidding? We, we can't. Um, I'll remind you that um, we were in the Euro League last year and scored a total of one point. All right. Thanks for watching. Best wishes.